Good morning, Good morning everybody. We Good welcome morning. you to New Life Ministries once again, and we just thank you for taking your time out to come and worship with us this morning. Thank Truly, you. God is He's worthy of all praise, glory, and honor, and we just give him all glory and praise and honor that's doing to him. We honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who um, we owe our lives to him, and he, he is worthy of all praise. And we give him all glory and honor that's doing to him. We honor the founder and our senior pastor who loved the Lord enough to receive a vision from him. And that is why we find ourselves here today. We honor her. We honor our assistant pastor, Prophetess Jones, and we honor our youth pastor, Elder A.V. We honor our mothers, our deacon, our deaconess, we honor our, our business administrator, Sister Searcy, and all those on the line. And we honor our fellow cousin and po our police officer this morning. Uh, he, 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 he's our cousin, and, and it's a privilege and an honor to have him in our presence this morning. And we pray a special prayer for him that the Lord would shield him and protect him as he, God has touched his heart and given him a, a, a heart to serve and protect because God has ordained government. So we honor you this morning for, for gracing us with your presence. We love the Lord today and he is worthy of all praise. And um, I'm going to take my time this morning because the Lord has a word for us this morning. And it starts out by saying, um, for I'm not ashamed. And everybody who, with, who stands with us today say, I'm not, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation unto everyone that believeth. And it's to the Jew first and also to the Greek. That's not our text, but I stand here today simply because I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation. But our text this morning will be coming from Luke chapter 19, and it's uh, verses 1 through 10. And it reads as follows. And Jesus sent it and passed through Jericho. And behold, there is a man named Zacchaeus came down and received him joyfully. And when he saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore to him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he is also the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that what was lost. Mm -hmm. And remain standing, because the word the Lord has for us today, he has looked past all my faults yeah. and saw my need. Yeah. Yeah. Remain standing. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Simply to say thank you, for you are God and God alone. And it says in your word, let the high praises of God be in our lips and a two-edged a two, a two sword in our hand. So let us praise you with all we have, simply because you alone are worthy. So I ask you this morning to look on me. Uh, remove anything in me that will hinder your word from going forth, Heavenly Father. And let your word prosper into that which is a sin, that you will get all glory, Heavenly Father. For it says, your word will not return unto you void, but it will prosper into that which is was sent. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. And the thought he gives me about, he has looked past all our faults. Because we got to remember, there's only one that was born perfect. His name is Jesus Christ. Yeah. And though we were created in his image, we still have faults. Mm -hmm. And in the Bible, and as I study the Bible, it tells us not to be a finger pointer. Yeah. You know, um, looking at people and, and, and finding all the faults, but look to see the good in every man. Yeah. Look, because think about it, that's what Jesus did with us. You know, he looked past all, all our faults and our shortcomings. He didn't overlook our sin. We're not saying God never overlooked sin. But because we have fault, he overlooks our faults and sees our need. And our need is salvation. Yes. Of everything we have needed, our deepest need is salvation. Amen. So we look at Zacchaeus this morning. And like the Bible says, he was rich. He was a tax collector. And Zacchaeus found himself overtaxing his own people, pocketing money. And because he is doing that, you got to figure Zacchaeus is hated by his own people. So Zacchaeus, his only friend he has is he himself, <laughs> you know, you know, so he's rich, but he's lonely, you know, and, and God can see his loneliness, mm -hmm. you know, and not only is he lonely because he's short, so I'm sure he got mocked because he was short, <laughs> but God knew, God knew, and you gotta, you gotta remember as Zacchaeus 
climbed the tree, that says something about his heart. And Jesus saw heart. So Jesus looked past him ripping. You know, he, he didn't overlook his sin or how he was uh, ripping off his own people. But he saw the heart of Zacchaeus, just like he sees ours. Yes. He's looking at the heart of man. God is always concerned about the heart of man. Yes. And he knows no matter what we see on the outside, God concerns about the heart. Because how, yes. how can change and transformation take place except it's starting our heart and our mind? Yes. How can we be transformed into these new creatures unless he speaks to our heart and mind? So Jesus saw the heart of Zacchaeus. You know, and I can imagine... If Zacchaeus didn't climb that tree and he was down there in the midst of them, they would have been elbowing him, tripping him, kicking him. So, you know, he was smart enough to climb a tree. He, and, and by climbing a tree, God knew that he, not, he wanted to see Jesus. So what? Jesus, Jesus invite, you know, he invites himself to the house of Zacchaeus. And they sit. And the Bible doesn't really say anything about what, the, what conversation took place. But they, you know, here's a visitor, here's a guest at Zacchaeus' house. And like the text said, he joyfully welcomed wow. Jesus. And, and that leads me back to a scripture that the Lord won't allow me to get away from it today. And it's Isaiah 9 and 6 reads as follows. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, yes. and his name shall be called Wonderful, yes. Counselor, yes. the Mighty God. The everlasting father, the prince of peace. Yes. So I got a feeling that Zacchaeus sat with the counselor. Because you have to think about, he received, there's only, the, the greatest counselor you can get is from the one and true counselor. The Bible says right now, his name is Jesus Christ. That's it. You know, he sat with this, this counselor. And, and, got, and they had a heart-to-heart -heart talk. And you can see after Zacchaeus had Jesus at his house for a visitor, the response was, I'm going to return everything I took fourfold. Yes. And I'm going to build a house and I'm going to feed the poor. So I could see that Zacchaeus had a, he had a, he had a, a, a visit with the counselor, the yes. ultimate counselor. Because yes. I realized in counseling, you know, we, we sit, you know, and we talk with our counselors. And there has to be a, a, a level of trust when you sit with a counselor. Yes. You know, and the counselor has to get to, get to touch the heart of the counselee. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and when we counsel, yes, there's going to be some uh, correction. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, there, there might be times of rebuke or reproof. But it's yeah. all d done lovingly. That why? Because we're, we're concerned about, you know, it's, it's not to change the outer behavior. Because right. change only takes place in the heart. Yeah. True, you know, we can, we can dress up a drunk. But if you don't speak to the heart, he's just going to be a, a drunk in a three-piece suit. Yeah. So when we counsel, when we counsel, and, and, and biblical, te biblical teaching is when we counsel, is what? To restore. Wow. It's about restoration. It's about not, not focusing so much on, on the outer, but dealing with the inner. Yeah. That's why we find ourselves here today, because God, we have sat with the counselor. Because we find ourselves here today, we have sat with the one true counselor. Yeah. And what he has, he has, we have had a heart to heart yes. with Jesus yes. Himself. Yes. There, you know, Jesus had many heart to hearts because I think one of them name was Saul. Come on. You know, yes. Saul was on that on that Damascus road. Yes. You know, and he had just got finished killing Christians. On. He was on a mission killing Christians. Yes. You know, and he, he he was sold out to killing every Christian he could get a hand. But he found himself on, on Damascus road, yes. and he had he had a. He had a visit with the counselor. Uh -huh. And his response was the counselor is the very thing I read, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel. <laughs> David had a meeting with the counselor. You know, David, you know, David, you know, he was David found he sent Naaman to tell him about his wrongs. You know, because God will always he will always address sin. He doesn't overlook sin, he will always address sin. But the next time we heard from David, he said, Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. And he, I believe Jesus had a counsel with, with this disciple, this disciple named Peter, yes. who was slicing off ears. And then he was sitting around, and he was, as he was teaching his disciples, he said, who is it that men say I am? And it was Peter said, thou art Jesus the Christ. For the Holy Ghost had revealed to, Jesus, revealed to Peter who Jesus was. And Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. So has anybody in here had an encounter with the counselor? Have you taken time to sit and let him talk to you and reveal to you who he really is? Because when we get to the heart of things, you know, it, it, 
Changing the outside is easy. We can dress anything up. We can always make it look pretty. But it's still, if we don't deal with the heart, it's still going to be dirty on the inside. So the counselor is here this morning. It doesn't matter what it looks like on the outside. The counselor is here today. He's looked past all our faults. He's not going he's not going to overlook sin. God will always address sin. But he looks past our faults. And he sees our need. He has looked past all our faults and he sees our need. And our need, our greatest need today is salvation. And once we receive salvation, this is how great God is. Once we receive salvation, no, we're not perfect, but in the eyes of God. <laughs> When we live, when we when, when God looks down and sees the blood of Jesus, He sees us as what? Perfect. He sees us as faultless. He looks. He sees us as blameless. He sees us as righteous. The sons and the daughters of God. So I, He has looked past all our faults. What? He, he's addressed our need. So have you taken time this morning to sit with a counselor? I know counselor seems to be. A, a shun word now today because a lot of times we think I don't need help. Oh yeah, you need help. You know, you know, we don't want we don't want people touching our mind or getting into you know digging stuff out. We avoid that. We do everything we do to avoid counseling. Yeah. But the Bible says the Bible says he's wonderful. And they call him counselor. And how how great is the counsel of God? So God has ordained some Christian counselors throughout this world. God has ordained some Christian counselors in this ministry that are willing to sit with you and give you what thus saith the Lord. That, that, that will sit with you and, and help the Lord speak to your heart. Because the mission is to speak to your heart that you will live a life of worship to your one true God, the only one true and living God, your creator. Who is worthy of all praise, glory, yeah. and honor. That's true counseling. Yeah. But you have to take time to sit with the counselor. Because yeah. he, what God says today, he's looking past all your faults. Jesus. And he's addressing your need. Yes. So those that are visiting us online through Facebook yeah. and Zoom, salvation has come to your house. Yeah. All you have to do, all you have to do is sit with the counselor. Yes. Sit with the one true counselor. His name is Jesus Christ. Yeah. He has looked past all your faults. Yeah. And he's here to address your need. For salvation has come to your house. He did it time and time again. I think about the Samaritan woman. Yeah. You know, you know Jew, a Jewish man would never sit with a Samaritan woman. A Jewish man would never even cut through Samaria. But what did Jesus do? He saw a need. He looked past her faults. He knew all about her reputation before she even sat with him. Yeah. Before she even gave him a drink. He knew, he knew where she was. He knew who she was. Yeah. He knew what she did. Yeah. And he addressed it. He said, that, hub, that, that man you have now is not your husband. Yeah. He addressed it lovingly. Mm. Correcting. Yes. What? But, but once again, to draw her closer to worship her one true creator. Okay. She, knew some, she knew about the God of the Israelites. She knew about the one true and living God. She's aware. Yeah. But Jesus addressed her need. Mm -hmm. He looked low. He, passed, he looked over. He looked past her faults. Now he, you know, I'm sure she felt lonely and shunned because everybody was talking about her. Everybody was looking on, looking down on her. The Bible says she didn't, you know, she didn't, couldn't even hold her head up in the midst of people. Maybe we've been there at one time. We felt like we couldn't hold our head up, but the Bible says he's the lifter of our head. This is the great, awesome God we serve. Where he looks past our faults, our imperfections. And as we walk this journey, what, what? The more and more we grow in Christ and we take on the characteristics of Christ, we're working towards that perfection. As we desire to do his work, the Bible says let, he makes us perfect in every good work to do his will. That should be our heart's desire today. For salvation has come to this house. Why? Because Jesus was, was letting Zacchaeus know, look, look, he was a descendant of Abraham, whether you like it or not. We're all descendants of Abraham. And salvation has come to this house. At 375 Old Post Road, salvation has come to this house. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Yes. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Yes. Jesus. This is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous yes. in his eyes. Yes. 
I can't, I can't hold back and neither can I be quiet. I have to tell it everywhere I go. I'm compelled to tell of his saving power. Why? Because he says in his word, I've come to, kept, to set the captives free. I've come to heal the sick and save the lost. There are many lost right out there right now. But God is able, and not only is able, God will do it. You could, the time is going to come where they, you're going to remember, I saw your face out there in the parking lot. God can do it. Not only can he do it, he will do it. It's our job to share the gospel. It's our job to preach the gospel. It's our job to be the living witnesses that he has created us to be. So what is God saying? I, have look, I look past your faults. And I've seen your need. And our need is Jesus Christ. Of everything we have need of, our need is Jesus Christ. Time and time I guess that Jesus is the answer. He is the answer. And every question you have, if you search the scriptures, you can get an answer to your question. That's the problem. We don't search the scriptures. God has an answer. There's nothing, he said, there's nothing new under the sun. So if there's nothing new under the sun, he has already provided an answer for you. Our job is what? To seek his face. Search the scriptures. Because the answer is doing it his way. And that's how we get in trouble. No, we, 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 get, we get impatient. And that's when we take things into our own hands. Just wait on them. Search the scriptures if you need an answer. He'll give you an answer. He will give you an answer. You look through it. You just go into the New Testament. He'll give you an answer for everything you have a question for. If you lack wisdom, he said, ask for it. And I'll give it to you. Jesus Christ, he is the, the wisdom of God. When you see Jesus, you witness the wisdom of God. The Bible says he is the, he is the, invisible, he is the visible face of an invisible God. That's who Jesus is. Wow. Thank you, Lord. That's just who he is. If you want to see God in action, you look at Jesus. The Bible said what? And the word was made flesh and what? Dwelt among us. If you want to see the Bible walk, look at Jesus. If you want to see the Bible talk, listen to Jesus. Yes. It's by the power of the Holy Ghost. And it's that same power that he gives us. Yes. If you want to witness the wisdom of God, Jesus is it all. Yes. If you want to witness the power of God, Jesus. Yes. For what was it? God has given him a name that is above every name. Yes. And what did Jesus say when, when, when he got up after raising? All power has been given unto me. All yes. power. Yes. This is the great, awesome God we serve. Yes. This is the reason why we live. Yes. Our life is hidden in Jesus Christ. But Jesus, yes. ought, to be, he ought not be hiding in us. Yes. Oh. Everybody ought to know that you are a servant of the Most High God. Yes. No matter what I go through, no matter what, I have to tell of his goodness. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. As we were studying in, in, in Sunday school no, in, uh, the other night, on Tuesday night, and we're studying the Psalms, and that word, that, that, that love and kindness kept popping out. And if you have tasted the love and kindness of God, how can you yet be the same? <laughs> Providence had us go through about 10 books and Psalms, right. mm -hmm. and that word love and kindness mm -hmm. kept popping out. And the Bible says, Thy love and kindness is better than life. Better Think than life. of that. Better than life itself. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I have tasted his love and kindness. That's how I found myself there. Because what? He looked past all my faults. That one that wasn't taking his family to church, he looked past my faults. That one that wasn't even going to church, he looked past my faults. And he saw my needs. He addressed my deepest need. It was salvation. Yes. How can we be the best? If you want to be the best you can be, your answer is Jesus. Yes. He's the only way. The Bible says he's the way, the truth, and he is the life. He is the life. Jesus. If you want a better life, that life is Jesus Christ. Yes. You, without him, you, you don't even have life. 
without Jesus Christ, you don't even realize that you're, you're spiritually dead. Yes. You're just a walking corpse. Wow. That's why I said we renew it in the power of our, of our mind. Yeah. So we walk, while we were out there lost, we were just a walking corpse. Oh, wow. Spiritually dead. Jesus. And we thought we were having fun doing yes. it. Yes. Out there dead. Having a good time doing it. Telling people it was fun. Walking uh-huh. dead. Come on. And... and and we have people now worshiping shows like that. Can't wait to get home to watch something like zombies. Just the walking dead. Without Jesus Christ, you're no different. Without Jesus Christ, you're just a walking dead. But Jesus said, I'll look past your faults and I see your need. You don't have to be the walking dead today. Jesus came, he came inside that you, you, come that you may have life, you may have life more abundantly. That, that, that abundantly is in him. Yeah. That abundantly comes from him. Yeah. I came this morning to give glory to Jesus because yeah. he alone is worthy. Yeah. And he's a God that he's a jealous God. He won't share his glory with another. So I, I stand here compelled to preach the gospel. Yeah. I stand here compelled to tell of his saving strength. I'm yeah. compelled to tell that he's a healer of all diseases. Yeah. I'm compelled to say that there's nothing too hard for my God. Nothing, nothing too hard. Mm-hmm. He's able, the Bible said, he's able to save to the utmost. Wow. To the utmost. Yeah. But I am encouraged today. Why? Because he has allowed me to stand before you and share the goodness of the Lord. But God, has look, he looks past our faults. And when we allow him, when we sit with the counselor and allow him to address our needs, when we realize our, our deepest need is him, let him speak to our heart and mind. Have a heart-to-heart with the counselor, the one true counselor. That you realize what, what he said, we ought to serve our creator and our youth. Serve him with you. It's never too late. Never too late to say yes to the Lord. Never too late to serve him with your whole heart, mind, and soul. Never too late to give your life to him. Never too late. There's no place you've been where he can't reach. For in him you can what? Find forgiveness of sins. They got mad about Jesus when he was talking about that. <laughs> but yeah, and then they realized, yes, because he is God, he, he was man and God. Yes, he, he's able to forgive sins. For in him, we find forgiveness of sins. Glory. That we can be redeemed back unto the Father because sin separates us from God. Mm-hmm. You don't want to remain separated from God. And all you have to do is what? Repent of your sins and believe that Jesus is the Son of God and believe that he suffered and died on the cross. And we studied that the other night, Friday night, my pastor taught like no other. How he was whipped and beaten beyond human recognition. He didn't even look human when they were done. And he did it for you. That we be redeemed back unto uh, our Father which is in heaven. Drawn back unto him. That we be in right fellowship with him. That we can live a life pleasing unto him. And be the disciple he created us to be. That's the great thing he had in store for us when he created us. That's all he wanted. That you be where you are today. Doing what you're doing today. Loving him like you do today. Praising him like you do today. Giving him honor like you do today. Designed to go farther and higher in him. That all you be your desire every day. To go deeper in his word. Higher in service. We're all just servants. Of the most high God though. So because he's the most high. I was glad when they said unto me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. And if if being a doorkeeper is the only place it got for me. I'm fine with that. 
long as I can make it to the house and be in his service of him and to him. We honor the Lord today. But like I said earlier, repent of your sins. And if you do that and believe that Jesus is the son of God and believe that he suffered and died on the cross and rose again on the third day, having all power in his hands, God has filled your need. If you pray that prayer and if you confess that, he has looked past all your faults. Not only did he see your need, he has felt that need. If you pray that prayer, he has felt the need. Now, you have to do is find yourself a Bible teaching church and go there. Yes. Which New Life Ministries happens to be. Yeah. Draw closer to him and be that disciple he created you to be. Because what? God has looked past your faults yeah. and saw your need. Take time and sit with the counselor, the counselor of all counselors. Yeah. Yeah. The all wise God. Yeah. All knowing God. Yeah. Everywhere present God. He is worthy of all praise, glory, and honor. Yes. And when you sit with the one true counselor, That's it. you can't remain the same. Glory. I go back to that Samaritan woman and say, come, could this, come see a man who yes. told me everything I had ever done. Yes. And then she is smart enough to, because they didn't, they didn't uh, honor the witness of a woman. She said, could this be the Christ? Mm. And when they went, they were all saved. He used the Samaritan woman, the one that her word meant nothing. Wow. Caused many to be saved. Yeah. The one they looked down on. Jeez. The one they was talking about. <laughs> Running the name through the mud. Caused many to be saved because she said, come see a man. Yeah. Could this be the Christ? She knew. She knew it was a Christ. <laughs> but she knew they wouldn't take a witness. So she said, come see, if, come see, for you. could this be the Christ? Because you know, every, just like Zacchaeus, they had the heart just like Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus said, I just want to see him. And he wanted to see him so bad that he climbed a tree. This rich man, this rich publican climbed a tree because he wanted to see Jesus. And Jesus honored it. He said, salvation has come to your house. Yes. And to those out there via Facebook and Zoom, salvation has come to your house. Yes. Jesus knows everything you, you're going through. He knows about everything. Yes. He's aware nothing catches God off guard. No. Nothing you're going through has caught him off guard. No. Sit with the one true yes. counselor. Have a heart-to-heart -heart with the counselor. Tell him all about it. Give it to him. He said, what? Cast all your cares upon me because I care. Are your burdens too heavy? It's meant to be that way. That's why they're too heavy. Give it to God. He's calling you. Is it more than you can bear? It's meant to be that way. You just have to give it to the right one. Because if it wasn't more than you can bear, we wouldn't need God. Jesus. I need him today. Yeah. I need him today. Yeah. I need him every minute, every day. So I understand that someone say, I need thee. Yeah. Every hour, I need thee. Yeah. I don't take one second for granted that I would say the right thing, that I would do the right thing. I don't take it for granted. If I do anything right and I say anything right, it was because God did it. Jesus. Only the Holy Ghost allows me to think right. Only the Holy Ghost allows me to do right. Yeah. Only the Holy Ghost allows me to say right. Because I have sat with the one and true counselor. Yeah. Yes, he looked past all my faults. And when he filled that need of salvation, I find myself here today. Yeah. With a high praise on my lips. And his word, a two-edged sword in my hand. So I thank the Lord today, and I praise him for his precious word. I've come to give God all the glory, and as I opened out, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it's the power of God unto salvation. But it's my desire that the Lord would be pleased today. I'm not so concerned about what man thinks. It's that God would be pleased, and that he got the glory that was doing to him. 
and my prayer for all those that have been uh, that have visited us with Zoom and Facebook, those that are in my presence right now. My prayer is that God will continue to continually use you for his glory. That's the only reason we're here. That we be used for his glory. That you continually sit in the presence of the one true counselor. Tell him all about it. And after you got done telling him, sit and wait for an answer. And let him talk to you. Because sometimes we, we, we go to him with a long list. And we up off our knees before he even gave us an answer. And something, just go to him. Scratch the list. Just go to him. And say, Lord, speak to me. Because Jesus himself, how great example was Jesus. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will. I'm sure when Jesus was facing that cup, he could have ran down the hole. He had the sins of the world in a cup. And what was the response? Nevertheless. Nevertheless. The sins of the world. Every sin that was ever committed at the time. Every sin that was going to be committed was in the cup. And his answer was nevertheless. Is there a nevertheless in you this morning? Is there a nevertheless in you this morning? Because when we sit with the one true counselor, you'll find out and you've tasted his goodness, those things you used to desire, those dreams you had, they changed. Why? Because you know it doesn't line up to where God wants me to be. It doesn't line up to what God wants me to do. And that's, that's the way it should be. He's concerned. You know, he understands your wants and your needs and even what? The desires of your heart. But the closer and closer I got to him, I realized those things I wanted, I don't want them. Those things I thought I need, I don't need them. I, I need Jesus. And if I had Jesus, everything is all right. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. He even said, well, well I'm, I will go with you until the end of this world. Yeah. I serve him with joy and gladness. Because mm-hmm. I realize as long as, I, long as he is with me, <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah. I can say right now, my life is in his hands. Yeah. Our life is in his hands. Mm-hmm. Give it to him. Sit with the counselor. He has looked past all our faults and he has addressed our needs. Mm-hmm. And our need is salvation today. Mm-hmm. Serve him with joy and glad. Just like Zacchaeus received the Lord into his house. He was happy God came to his house. Yeah. That's how we ought to be. Yeah. Happy coming into his house, but he ought to be welcome in our house. Yeah, that's right. Make time for him. Yeah. Sit with him. Yeah. And let him talk with you. Let him counsel you from the true counselor. The counselor of all counselors. Yeah. His name is Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And as you sit with the council, you got to realize you're sitting with the wisdom of God. Mm-hmm. You're sitting with the power of God. Mm-hmm. You're sitting with the face of God. Mm-hmm. If you want to know God, know Jesus. Mm-hmm. And the more you know Jesus, the more you know God. So my prayer is that the Lord is pleased today. And my prayer is that you have heard everything that the Lord had to say. And above all things, I, my prayer is that he has a place understanding in your mind. Yes. And implanted obedience in your heart. That you would do and be the people he created you to be. Yes. We thank you for your time. We thank you for gracing us with your presence. And we're going to turn this part of the service back into the hands of our youth pastor, Elder A.V. God bless you.